Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today we are looking at a tier 5 cruiser. And the reason we there are several reasons why we're looking at this one. Uh, first of all, the lower tiers tend to be often tragically overlooked. There are some interesting ships in there. Second of all, this ship actually existed, which always makes it more interesting. And third of all, this is actually a very, very good light cruiser, and I like light cruisers. So you're getting a tier 5 cruiser today, and this one is the La Argentina. The, from the new Pan-American cruiser line, or from the Argenti Argentinian Navy to be more specific, is, uh, comes this little ship here. Now, I did say that she existed, and that is true. This ship was uh, was purpose built as a training ship. the The Argentinians at the time were realizing the need to have a have an improved training ship around for their officer corps and for their sailors to you know get training on more modern ships, and uh, had a tender out to both the Italians and the British. And the British ended up using the Arethusa class uh, of, of light cruisers as a basis. But uh, this ship ended up being a modified version of that because the Argentinians did want to have a slightly different design, more geared towards this actually being a training ship. And uh, as such, she ended up being one of the one of the really good ships in the Argentinian Navy at the time. But uh, obviously, due to the fact that she was a training ship, never really saw combat. She has, however, been sailing around the world for a long time. And uh, until she was finally actually decommissioned in the 1970s, together with the last remaining Brooklyns. So for a tier 5 cruiser, <laughs> that's not a bad career. Uh, one of the main differences that you'll notice if we look at the ship is uh, that she carries more guns than you'd normally find on an Arethusa. She carries uh, triple turrets and uh, such nine guns. So that's one of the main differences that we're seeing here. And yeah, obviously, well, this is tier 5, so uh, we are starting to see some ship skills around that tier. And we do actually, I think, have two other Arethusa class light cruisers in the game, the uh, Chongqing and the Wang Hei, uh, although the Wang Hei is up tiered at tier 6. So if we are comparing her to the Pan-Asian tier 5 light cruiser, uh, La Argentina obviously gets the uh, gets the special starts showing the specialties that you're going to be seeing later on in the cruiser line. And she does get the improved heel, although at this tier and for such an extremely light cruiser, it doesn't make a massive amount of difference. She does get the basic combat instructions, although at this point, uh, again, that's the entry level. You get 10% dispersion, 10% uh, penetration power, and 10% reload time. And she gets a defensive AA-1 as well, whereas the Pan-Asians obviously have their specific set. But let's look at the numbers. And uh, yes, this is sort of the same the same story we've had previously. Extremely light cruiser, barely more than destroyer uh, health, levels of health. And the armor, well, it, it, let me put it this way. It's kind of there to make sure that the water stays outside the ship under normal circumstances. <laughs> it's not meant to prevent <laughs> this ship from getting shot at in any way whatsoever. So yes, you are in an extremely light cruiser and getting shot at is not something that the ship reacts very well to. She is not the most maneuverable, but it's not quite as bad as in higher tiers. So you can still very much make this work. Uh, a little bit on the slow side with 29 knots. But uh, obviously the key here are the three triple turrets of 150mm guns. And obviously the layout, because she's carrying two-thirds of her firepower forwards with these guns. Which means that you can and need to, at occasions, be bow in and still get six guns on target. Which uh, you can't really do with, uh, with the other, other Arethusas, given that they only have six guns overall. Interestingly enough, she does slightly less damage uh, with the armor piercing than uh, than the Chongqing, but um, well, such it such it is. The torpedoes are somewhat comparable. Uh, they're a little bit slower, do a little bit less, a little bit less range, have a little longer reload, but do slightly more damage. Relatively comparable torpedoes, pretty good torpedo angles. And uh, unfortunately, this is not the later refit from the I think 1940. 
late 40s, early 50s, where she was getting significantly boosted AA, but this is the original set, uh, which means the defensive AA skill is sort of more for decoration <laughs> than <laughs> for anything else, because the amount of, um, uh, of anti-aircraft firepower is quite laughable. Then again, it's tier 5. There are things in tier 5 that don't have any anti-aircraft firepower, I think. Uh, there's a battleship or two. Uh, surface detection is significantly worse than uh, on, on her friends, and obviously she doesn't get the fuel smoke, so she does need to be a little bit careful. Well then, uh, let's have a look at a setup. You get the choice, uh, you don't get a huge amount of choices at, uh, at these tiers, but uh, you can either take 3% uh, speed or 2% hit points. Given that she has no hit points to begin with, 2% of nothing still is very much nothing, so uh, the speed it is, everything else is just AA uh, damage, which is, uh, it, like we just looked at, completely insignificant, and 7% uh, main battery traverse speed, which is nice to have. Uh, this is tier 5, so you don't get any historical camels. But uh, equipment-wise, no surprises here. I'm loading the main battery mod 2, because these are gunboats. And uh, you could, alternatively, you could load the main battery mod 1, because I think the turret traverse... Yeah, it's 10.7 degrees per second. It's not grand. But then again, most of the time, you've got these two uh, forward turrets super firing anyway. And so it's not a huge it's not a huge loss. So you could either take main battery mod one or the main battery mod two if you don't mind having okay occasionally having your turrets shot off a little bit more. Other than that, it's a completely standard set because you can't even fit concealment at tier five. So I did mention that this is a very good tier five cruiser. Well, um, I like light cruisers around mid tier mostly because most people tend not to pay too much attention. <laughs> And you can, you can basically zip around in these oversized destroyers and uh, make an absolute nuisance out of yourself. Plus, you can take care of enemy destroyers quite well. And with these guns, that's uh, obviously fine. Now, she does have a slower reload than uh, the Chongqing. But, uh, you know, uh, if, you, if you activate the combat instructions... And interestingly, somebody pointed out in the comments recently, and I did actually look that up, but um, interestingly enough, the radar-guided rangefinders appear to be observe appear to have been observing uh, shell splashes as well. So I didn't know that. I thought they would just be observing the target ship. So it's a fascinating topic to dive deeper into, and uh, I might need to dig up some literature on that. I've just looked at the at the manual of the Mark Thirty Seven. But uh, yeah, it's a fascinating topic, that is. So I wasn't completely correct when I mentioned that in one of the earlier reviews. Anyway, up to the commander, it's a tier 5, so I'm going to go with the tier 5 commander here. There's really no surprises. Uh, I'm obviously using the uh, defensive AA uh, skill, the air defense expert, not because the ship has any particular meaningful uh, air defense, but uh, this is obviously the build going. If you were grinding up the line and wanted to bring the commander along, you have to kind of make these decisions early on for what uh, what you need in later tiers, because uh, resetting a commander once he's up to level 8, 9, 10 is going to get quite expensive. So really no surprises here. And like I said, no uh, historical camo anyway, so we don't really have to do that one. So I've just got two games for you, regular mid-tier gameplay, and uh, I'll show you why I enjoy this ship. The first round is a 4v4 against uh, Zuihu, König, La Galissonnière and Nakasta. Now, there are a bunch of bots, and we're shooting a bunch of bots, but it's uh, central, co central Control in Golden Channel, <laughs> my favorite, <laughs> and uh, bane of my existence at some at times. But yeah, we are do we are actually bottom tier, and uh, the reason I'm mentioning this is uh, because there, while we are going to be shooting at some bots, uh, there's some interesting information to be coming out. So. Uh, we will see how, how that goes. But uh, mid uh, tier 5 light cruisers, there are a couple of interesting ones out there. The uh, the German one, for example, is a quite nice, quite, ni quite nice little ship. But obviously, yeah, you have absolutely no armor. So if, if somebody does pay attention, then uh, battleships can and will very much delete you. And you have no real way out of there because you have no smoke screens or anything similar. So you do have to be a little careful. But the torpedo range is good. You can use them. You can use them quite successfully, and uh, you. However, you, you will need to learn how to use your armor piercing, 
And yes, I am getting myself into the way of these dive bombers and to use whatever little uh, uh, anti-aircraft firepower I have uh, to hopefully make a little bit of a difference. But again, it's mid-tier. The carrier probably is going to go for the carrier snipe because that's just what you do in mid-tier. And uh, shots out. Unfortunately, the lock-on changed from the Yakasta to the Fubuki. That's why it's overshot. But uh, you can see already that the base dispersion on these guns is very good. And uh, that's something that I'm not actually used to from 150 millimeters in in the higher tiers they were um, they could be a little questionable but uh, against destroyers having 650 millimeter armor piercing gun lo guns loaded because most most cruiser players at this tier haven't figured out yet that they should be using armor piercing against destroyers uh, can be very very dangerous it's kind of like a treated like a british cruiser which to be all in all honesty it really is but uh, just kind of treat it like that if you are in a destroyer and be aware that these things are very very dangerous now this is a bot pensacola so uh, if this was a player pensacola i would not be sitting here broadside on but uh, bots are proximity targeting so uh, that thing is going to be shooting at the friendly congo and yes pensacola does not have any armor so let's get the torpedoes away we'll see if we can get a hit in or if the other bot got in the way while uh, starting to open up on the fuso and while the fuso is a tier 6 ATS 6 battleship, and yes, that thing needs to die. Uh, is ATS 6 battleship? You can perfectly well uh, do large amounts of armor piercing damage against that thing by just targeting the bow section. And again, that's where the uh, relatively, uh, relatively precise guns are actually coming into play. Now we've got the combat instruction running. As you can see, it does not do an awful lot in the dispersion, but the dispersion tends to be generally pretty good. And uh, even even at, against destroyers with the 10% uh, 10 penetration increase, you don't do enough just yet to over, start over penetrating destroyers. So it's a very beginner friendly uh, set of guns to get you to learn the ropes on these things. Now there is a battleship there on the left, but uh, let's finish off the Acasta over there and uh, make sure that that guy does not get out of here. Uh, but uh, there is an Omaha chasing up, uh, chasing after him, and I think he's very dead. Now that is a full health Koenig. Um, not something you normally want to uh, get into a gunfight in, in, some, in a light cruiser that has no armor and about as much health as a destroyer. But uh, yeah, because they could do that to you. <laughs> now probably wasn't even a citadel, it was just some, just some regular penetrations. But uh, if you target bow and stern section and uh, use the absolutely excellent torpedo angles, and uh, combined with the fact that a lot of players, battleship players, don't really know what they're doing just yet. So just keep the ship bow in and, uh, and time, the, uh, uh, time the salvos somewhat that you can make your way around. You can actually outplay people here. Now if the König had realized that it is possible to steer the ship le left, left or right, then, you know, I'd, be, I'd, I'd have been dead here. But uh, Or if he had realized that you can damage control floods. But you know, new players, they don't necessarily know these things yet. And uh, if you're not shooting into the belt armor, but at the stern section, you can make, you can do a lot of damage with these relatively rapid firing guns. And uh, yeah, he's not turning the ship around, so uh, that is going to cost him the ship. And uh, things aren't over yet, because while the enemy carrier has been taken out and we've clearly won, uh, there is still a cruiser around. And uh, we'll find out where exactly it is. I'm relatively low on hit points at this point, obviously, because I've just been brawling a Koenig in a light cruiser. <laughs> but uh, uh, I am still spotted. So something is still out there somewhere. Okay, now I'm unspotted. So now I'm outside of its spotting range. And uh, I have no idea what that is, but because I can't, I can't remember what... I think it was a La Galissonnière, like a tier 6 French light cruiser. So just going around looking to see if we can spot it and i think we just found her or rather the carrier found her there she is and it's a full health light cruiser must have been sailing the long way around all the way around the, side, the edge of the map to get uh, to get to the to the carrier again uh, tier 5 games you can't really blame the players uh, just yet for not understanding how capture circles work uh, even though it is uh, pretty prominently displayed on the on the battle interest screen <laughs> that this is something that you need to do but uh, he's now zoomed in onto the carrier so we can blaze away with the guns if uh, and the galissonier is a very very good a very good little ship so uh, definitely not something i'd underestimate in a light cruiser because that thing, uh, that thing can do a lot of damage. And uh, one thing that tells you that uh, a player might know what they're doing is uh, 
is is that uh, the firing armor piercing. Because these things come with high explosive preloaded. So if somebody knows that they can change their ammo type and that what it, and why they should do that, that actually generally tells you something. So I'm, I'm rather surprised not to have seen that chip in the middle of the capture circle at any time. But now we are taking on a La Galicionaire, which has significantly more hit points than us. That's where the forward gun turret arrangement comes in. Now the Galicionaire has the same thing. But um, it decides to sit on broadside to me, which is much appreciated, because it allows me to completely or mostly ignore the incoming gunfire while uh, still being able to use my own. Now, now I do have to turn here, uh, because the Galicionaire has torpedoes as well, so uh, and that is instantly going to hurt. But I should be able to complete the turn before that thing reloads. Either way, we've got the torpedoes away, and he's missed the second salvo. Now I've got the heal coming off, and that is a very dead Galicionaire, and he's missed me again. <laughs> so there we go. We actually survived that battle after brawling uh, a German battleship <laughs> and a top tier crew, a top tier light cruiser that knew how to f how to use armor piercing. So uh, this is a brilliant little boat. Uh, I am very much enjoying the ship, and uh, you can uh, you can. Again, if you know how to use the armor piercing, <laughs> do actually quite decent amounts of damage in it. And uh, let's look at where we came in the team. Yes, uh, we have done pretty much as much damage as the next two in the team. Uh, so that's a, that's a good round. Which brings us to the second game, which is base capture on Aurora. And again, we are bottom tier here, so no, uh, no tier fours. But I think the only two tier sixes in the enemy team are the battleships. Now, uh, the New Mexico and the Fuso. There is a, an Iron Duke, a Montecuccoli, an Agano, Hill, and a Black Kamikaze. So definitely some dangerous ships out there. But uh, Aurora can always be uh, Aurora can always be a little funky in base capture. My standard play in Aurora, especially in something like a cruiser, which can do bow-in operations, is uh, to, if we're spawning south like this, is to take the western flank. So uh, you'll often find that uh, that an enemy team, that, that some enemy players try to sneak around a long way and get into your capture circle. So with two destroyers out there, I'm putting my support cruiser hat on and uh, heading straight to the western end uh, to intercept anything that's coming around there. The other advantage that this position has is uh, that it allows you to crossfire. Uh, not, not that armor angling in any way matters here. The, the thing about crossfires in Blitz is that, well, if a battleship points its guns on one side, it's not really going to be shooting at the other. And if I can be on the other side, I can unload into, into enemies that are otherwise occupied and are not pointing their guns at me. And not having their guns pointed at you in this thing is... Um, uh, very conductive to your general survival, let me put it that way. All right, we haven't been spotted yet, so I'm using my own concealment here to see if there's anybody sneaking around. So either they're going behind the islands or the, there's no destroyer coming this way. But there is a battleship coming this way and it's in New Mexico. Now, where is that New Mexico looking? So if you pick at the guns, right now he's just looking forward. Okay, I am spotted. That wasn't in New Mexico. There's something else out here. So I was right, there is a destroyer. But uh, there you see the impact that these 150mm guns are having. So since I don't know where the New Mexico is, is pointing his nose or his guns at, nope, the New Mexico is shooting at, uh, at my team. So uh, that's fine. I didn't have to go defensive. I can actually go aggressive. And uh, there are some torpedoes. Yep, there is something out here. I know. But let's get torpedoes away against the New Mexico. And there's the hill. Now, uh, uh, New Mexico has spotted me because he's starting to unload the secondaries at me, but, uh, which means he is also going to start and try to get the guns pointed, uh, turned around. But the New Mexico is currently not my, my, my object of interest. I'm more interested in the hill. So uh, I am just, uh, yeah, because the hill's got more torpedoes coming. And, uh, I'm not sure the hill is familiar with this ship, but you definitely don't want to sit broadside to a light cruiser. Not using the combat instructions here just yet. Uh, he has outrun my torpedoes, I believe, uh, but uh, is now smoking up. So we've definitely deterred that guy. And New Mexico has gotten distracted again, <laughs> as battleship players are want to do. So we get the combat instructions up and start unloading into the bow section of uh, that tier 6 battleship. And just farming the damage, because as you can see, uh, you can get a lot of firepower on target. Uh, there is there is the enemy Agano, so we're gonna have to be once again getting away from here. 
Uh, because we're now we're now facing four. There's the Monte Cucoli, there's the hill, the New Mexico, and the Agano. New Mexico isn't paying attention, so uh, so I don't really uh, I don't really need to worry about him too much. But I'll try to to delete that hill over there. Who is again? This is what I mean with crossfires. Okay, he's turning. Is he turning or is he not turning? Uh, okay, never mind. He's dead. Um, there comes some more. Oh, he's having been paying attention. If these are hill torpedoes. Or well, this could be uh, Agano torpedoes, or from the Monte Cucoli as well. So, uh, lots of possibilities. New Mexico is still not paying any attention. Monte Cucoli is otherwise occupied. It's a bit of a lemming train. My team is obviously bimbling, bimbling around behind the islands on the other side, and I'm the only one holding down the things here on this flank. And uh, because I know how this works already, uh, let's take on the Monte Cucoli. My combat instructions are ready. I'm going bow in against that thing. He has the semi-armor piercing loaded. Uh, I'm not sure if that thing gets. Uh, if that thing gets high explosive, no, he gets uh, uh, same armor piercing and armor piercing, right? So uh, we do have to be a little careful. And there's also the Agano. So torpedoes coming. That's why I'm already in reverse and turning bow in. And yeah, this as, at this range, um, you are not gonna have you're not gonna have a good time. Now Monte Cucoli smokes up, but that's a fuel smoke, so he's probably gonna come around here somewhere. Let's get the torpedoes out at the Monte Cucoli. A couple of prospective shots. No, he's moved on. Some people don't know that they that they can't that they need to stop in their um, uh, that they can't stop in their fuel smokes or they don't have to stop in their fuel smokes. Okay, that's the Monte Cucoli dealt with. That leaves that Agano. Now the New Mexico is in the capture circle, but I've been wearing him down quite a bit already this uh, uh, this this game so far. So uh, now we are going to take on that Japanese cruiser. And uh, that thing's gonna have torpedoes and is also firing the armor piercing. There come the torpedoes. So he's he's out of torpedoes on the port side for now. So if he's gonna turn around, then we know why. But uh, um, he's, lo he's loaded the armor piercing. There, there comes the turn. Uh, combat instructions up. And uh, let's make good use of it. And uh, <laughs> two precise guns. I thought he would be turning a little faster. So he's got torpedoes on the starboard side. So do have to be careful here. Let's drop a little bit, a little ahead in case he completes the turn and sails right into it. But uh, I am now running relatively low on hit points. Again, defensive posture here to make sure that most of the uh, the Agano's guns are missing. And obviously, he's giving me a very nice big target to shoot at. He has managed to avoid the torpedoes. Unsurprisingly, it's a light cruiser. It, it, it you know, can steer. Uh, I, he doesn't seem to have torpedoes ready, but um, I didn't need torpedoes to kill him. So that thing is dead, which just leaves one destroyer out there. It's not the hill because we killed the hill already, and that New Mexico is still uh, is still trying to uh, is still trying to cap, but uh, is now engaged by one of our cruisers that's been uh, that's been staying behind on the other side of the game, uh, and we found the destroyer, or rather, my team found the destroyer. So um, this is unlikely to go sideways until unless the destroyer kills one of my battleships in their cap, and the New Mexico kills that cruiser in our cap. Uh, then we'd then we'd be tied, but uh, uh, we might still be ahead on points because uh, a cruiser is more is worth more than a destroyer. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. But um, that Königsberg, how how are you still alive <laughs> after engaging a New Mexico at point? Okay, he's he's firing high explosive at the New Mexico. Well, that um, that that's a bit of an issue. You want to use the armor piercing ideally. Uh, although the New Mexico doesn't look like he's... Actually, that's not the New Mexico, that's the Fuso. Okay, never mind then. The New Mexico was already dead, so that was the Fuso. Still, you should have been using the armor piercing on a German cruiser. Uh, it's... Um, I, I, would, I, I would say it's a sin <laughs> not to use the armor piercing <laughs> if I was the religious type. So, uh, Fuso, we're down to 5,000 hit points. We have no more heals left, so we do have to be a little bit conservative. But, um, again, Fuso is otherwise occupied. That's what you have teammates for. It gives the enemy something to shoot at, to quote Jingles. And so uh, we're just farming a little bit more damage on, on the Fuso at long range here, but the battle is almost over and uh, we're, sti we're still 100 points ahead. So uh, despite the loss of the Königsberg, which by the way is also one of the really, really good light cruisers, that went well. So um, yeah, there you go. La Argentina. This is an absolutely excellent uh, tier five light cruiser. If, if you enjoy light cruiser play, uh, that thing is fun. I really, really enjoy enjoy the guns on this ship. So she's got the torpedoes to make use of. And uh, you can compensate for the absence of armor or smokes at mid-tiers quite, quite easily because, you know, enemy teams tend not to pay too much attention. But yeah, so uh, that one 
if you want to keep that one, I would I would say that's worth uh, that's actually worth keeping. Uh, if you if you want to keep a, a light cruiser for tier five uh, gameplay around, that is a good ship. So there we are, and that's it for me today. Thanks everybody, and I will see you next time. Bye bye.